and uh, it'll have a stronger magnetic moment. It'll be, a, in, in a sense, a stronger little magnet. Right? That's classical physics. All right. Now let's uh, now let's put it in a magnetic field, and you will uh, there'll be a kind of potential energy term that's uh, the dot product. Now again, now we're talking still classical physics. So we're talking um, vectors, just ordinary three-dimensional vectors in classical mechanics. So it'll be the magnetic moment, dot product, times uh, the magnetic field. You know, um, so uh, well, I, I, I assume you know about magnetic fields. Right? So the, the field around a magnet uh, uh, that has a certain strength, so that's its magnitude, and it'll have a direction. So mag magnetic field lines, uh, by convention, I think go from the North Pole to the South Pole? Or is it the other way around? Uh, well, yeah, it's just a convention. So. Right? So uh, this is a kind of potential energy term. Now, uh, now why, why are we talking about this? Because um, we'll now use the correspondence principle and assume that uh, we can, uh, we can, we can uh, take this classical uh, and, um, magnetic moment formula and find an equivalent in quantum mechanics and then we'll, we'll make this L angular, upper, uh, angular momentum as a vector here in classical mechanics we'll make that into an operator and put a hat, hat over it right? so, uh, so that's, that's what we're doing here by correspondence principle type reasoning so uh, so if you if you're you've got a physical problem and you have a Hamiltonian for that problem and uh, you switch on you switch on a magnetic field let's say the field magnetic fields oriented vertically let's say the z axis okay so uh, you switch on a magnetic field and uh, because this mu b here um, you'll get uh, a potential the potential term uh, will be be part of the um, Hamiltonian, be like a, an additional term to the Hamiltonian as soon as you switch on the magnetic field. As soon as your B here uh, becomes non-zero, right? So this B switches on. So you could you could call... Um, now, now remember uh, from classical mechanics that uh, the Hamiltonian, classical Hamiltonian, it's really just an energy term. It's, a, it's a, the sum of energies, like kinetic energies and potential energies. So, um, so when, then when you go to the quantum Hamiltonian, uh, that quantum Hamiltonian will uh, also have, um, in operator form, you, know, you, you convert your... Uh, classical uh, observables into operators, like your, your r would become r hat and your momentum p would become p hat, in other words, what is it, minus i h bar d b d r or whatever, okay? So, um, as soon as you switch on, lost it again, uh, as soon as you switch on the magnetic field, you get like an extra term in the Hamiltonian, now, think, think of it as a, like a potential an extra potential term, a potential energy term. And uh, that uh, extra term in the Hamiltonian, we call it mag, due to the magnetic field, uh, and now the angular momentum component uh, is hatted, it's an operator. Okay, and let's, let's assume that the magnetic field is uh, oriented uh, up the z-axis. Okay? Now, if, uh, if the rest of the Hamiltonian, like this is an additional term to it, but if the, the other parts of the Hamiltonian, if they, if they commute with this, then uh, your eigenstates will just be uh, eigenstates of LZ, right? Um, because the rest commute. Uh, we did that a bit before. Now, um, the eigenstates of this, let's just label them M, or your uh, M ket, if you like. And uh, yeah, it's just an L. An L um, think of this as an L. Think of that as a constant, and this is just your angular momentum z component as usual. So there'll be a, 
uh, an eigenvalue, you know, the, the component along the z-axis of this. You've done, certainly done that before, right? So these are the, the, eigen, the eigenvalues, again, just m h bar, done that before, or revision, right? So the eigenstates, the eigenfunctions, are just the m, m ket here. Now, when b is zero, this term, yeah, b is zero, this term drops away, so then your um, energy eigen equation, in other words, your Hamiltonian equation, uh, so this is zero, so you just left with h naught hat, there's e naught, there's your eigenvalue for, for this eigen equation, right? e naught. But when, when your b is non-zero, when you switch it on, you get, you get a, like this, uh, additional term in the Hamiltonian, H mag. Now, if that's sort of small in a sense compared to this one, you can look on this as, as just a, a perturbation. You're, 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 in a sense, perturbing this Hamiltonian here. Uh, a perturbation is just a, a small disturbance, right? a small change in. So uh, your Hamiltonian now becomes the main part of the Hamiltonian, this one, plus a little bit, right? the, the, the perturbed Hamiltonian. So this whole thing is the perturbed Hamiltonian, and that, that part is the perturbation, the, the, the small change, right? So, um, now since uh, the eigenfunctions of this, in other words this, are m hat, this is also m hat, so the, you can put the eigenvalue for this, this, same thing, um, we'll accept the constant, and you'll get, you'll get this kind of thing. Uh, now, that's just a constant that's there anyway, and uh, the eigenvalue for LZ is m h bar, so that's where this comes from, m h bar, and the EB over 2m, EB, that's, well that's just a constant from this, right? So, uh, so what, what you've got is, when the magnetic field is switched off, Right? When B is naught, so this, this term here just drops out, you've just got that. But when you switch on the magnetic field, be, because of the magnetic moment of your, your electron, let's say, your charge, your energy is going to split due to this, you know, well, due to this term. Now, how many m's are there? Uh, How many m's are there? Well, uh, if your angular momentum uh, eigenvalues are l, little l, remember for a given l, the m's, the, the components along the z-axis, they can range from minus l to l. So there'll be two l plus one different m values. Right? So these m's here uh, range over, they have two, two little l plus one different values. So this energy here, <coughs> this energy term, this eigenvalue, <coughs> splits two, uh, two little l plus one ways. So the, there will be uh, two l plus one different values of this energy eigenvalue. Okay, so in a sense, with the magnetic field switched off, you just get E naught as your eigenvalue. But as soon as you switch on the magnetic field, uh, the, this energy eigenvalue is going to split uh, into two L different possible possible ways. Right? So you, you can get two L plus one different different values. Now it's quantum mechanics, so you're never sure which one you're going to get. But uh, you know, if you do lots and lots of experiments, eventually you'll end up with uh, two L plus one different different energy levels. Now if this if this is fairly small compared to this it's going to be a fairly fine splitting of the energy so uh, and that's that's what happens uh, in you know in physics labs so. right I'll end the session there